Samantha from GCMA Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a Skinner Blend Mica Shift. So I was thinking I'd also show you how to tint your polymer clay using alcohol inks. So this is actually pearl white tinted with sailboat blue and this is a nice way to get your colours your to expand the range of metallic clays that you have without decreasing the metallic content. Now I do have an article on um, metallic clays and so I'll provide a link to that but basically using alcohol inks to tint them is a great way to keep your mica shifts really nice and pure. So this was Pearl White Primo and I put on a layer of amethyst and I did basically the same with this one and then you just let it dry for about 10 minutes and then you just mix it in and this will tint your clay and it means that your mic shift will still remain really nicely bec really nice because if you mixed in um, let's say a color of polymer clay you would decrease the amount of mica particles you had in your clay which would mean that your mica shift wouldn't be as strong so it's good to tint it with the alcohol ink and it also means that you basically have unlimited an unlimited range of colors so I'll just continue mixing this one in okay and so here's what it looks like now that it's mixed in so you can see these colors are really nice and it doesn't use up too much alcohol ink if you wanted the colors to be a bit darker you could add more alcohol ink of course but I wanted them to remain quite pastely and then I'm also going to be using Silver Prima. Now what we want to do is we want to cut out a square of each colour. And I'm going to use the smallest cutter in my Skinner Blend um, square range. And so here's the smallest one. And they come in a set. And now these ones are my test pieces. They're a little bit different on Dressima Design on Etsy. And I'll provide a link to where you can buy these cutters if you want. But basically what they do is they just cut out a nice perfect square for you. And then you just fold that square in half. And it creates a triangle ready for you to use in a Skinner Blend. Now do the same for these two as well. There we are. Very quick and very easy. And so now what you'll do is just basically create a Skinner Blend. And I've shown a tutorial on how to create a Skinner Blend already and I'll provide a link to that. And this is a three pot Skinner Blend. You can do this and create a two pot Skinner Blend just by taking out one of these colours. But I wanted a three pot today. And basically you just do the exact same thing. Just you're going to be using metallic clays this time around. And I don't want so much silver, so I'm just going to cut off that little bit. And now we can use this and turn this into a Skinner Blend. Like that. And so I've made the Skinner Blend quite narrow because I want to take a bead out so that I can see the entire Skinner Blend. So, now what we want to do is, since we're going to be making a mica shift, we need to trim off these areas that have these crags and cracks because that's not going to make a nice mica shift. I have already done a tutorial on how to create a nice mica shift and I'll provide a link to that. But basically you want your sheet to be one smooth consistent colour so you don't want it to look like this. You want it to have one nice consistent colour. Now I'm going to be using the core tools from Linda's Art Spot and this is the square rhythms one. I'll provide a link to where you can buy that in the description below. And I'm going to gently spray the surface of our clay so that it doesn't stick. And I'm going to start rolling. And I've already done a tutorial using these. It was quite a fun tutorial actually. I did a mica frills tutorial and so I'll provide a link to that one as well. There we are. Okay, so there we are. 
Now you want to dry this like that and I've also dried the tile as well. Now what you want to do is you want to bring over a tissue blade and my tissue blade of choice is the really flexible sort. I like to hold it in the middle and bend slightly and start shaving. I'm going very carefully here. I'm just shaving the top part at the moment, so I need to go a little deeper before we start to see that mica shift. There we are, I can already see that it's going to look quite nice. I'm trying to get these off. There we are. This is going to make a really nice mica shift. And what I'm going to do is once I've finished the mic shift, I'm going to turn a piece of this sheet into a cabochon, bake it, sand it and buff it so you can see exactly what it's going to look like once finished. Okay, so I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing here, shaving off the raised areas of the pattern. There we are. So I can already see that this mic shift looks great. And I've just put all of the shavings off to the side over here for the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm gently going to take my acrylic roller and roll this flat. And that core roller gives a really nice pattern. Now I have a not so good end down this end. Just go trim that off. And also over here is not great. Just trim that off. And don't worry, I'll show you what to use those for in a minute. And remember to roll in both directions. Now I prefer to do this with my acrylic roller rather than my pasta machine because I just feel like I have more control over what I'm doing. Really happy with how it's turned out. It looks beautiful. And there we are. So now that's almost flat, it's got a few areas that aren't flat yet and so I'd spend a little while rolling over those areas but basically it's flat. So I'll just put that down and pick this up and show you what that mic shift looks like. Looks really nice and basically this is just pearl white and silver primo clay. So you can see what it looks like on the back versus what it looks like now. So that's really cool. I put that to the side for the moment and I'll bring over all of those scrap pieces that we have. I'm just bringing all of it over. I'm also going to just gently rip this into small pieces as well. And now I've also shown a really cool technique called the mica smash and that's a great way to use up metallic polymer clay and in this case we've got plenty of metallic polymer clay here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to arrange these in a somewhat orderly manner and pop some of these around them too just like this doesn't have to be any particular way. And then gently press on it. Now this might work. I'm not sure quite if it's going to work or not because um, these shavings are a little different from the technique that I showed in the Micam Smash tutorial. But I don't see why it shouldn't work. So I'm just squishy it together. Then I'll bring over my acrylic roller. And roll. And actually that looks really nice. A little different from the last one. The last one was a little bit more stony, but this one looks good. And I want to see what it looks like on the back as well. I'll pick that up. And it looks really interesting on the back as well. So I just want to roll that flat. And then you can use this. 
So here's the bead now that I have finished sanding and buffing it. And so you can see that it, the sanding, buffing and everything has really brought out those colours. And you can see it makes a di big difference when you sand and buff it. And so you don't need to put resin on these sorts of beads. Of course if you've domed a bead it's very hard to put resin on those sorts of beads. But basically that is what the technique will look like once you have baked, sanded and buffed it. And then it will look even better if you put resin on it because the resin just adds a lot more depth to it. But you can see it looks good with the buffing as well. So I do hope that that tutorial was helpful to you. And if it was, please do let me know as that is always helpful to me. And please do send in photos of what you do using this technique. I always love seeing your photos. You can send them in through the website jessimatutorials.com and you can also send them um, through on Facebook. Just remember to tag me in the post. And as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.